Hi, and this is Jeff Bomer, and this is my second constructional video, making bandsaw boxes. This is BM101, Box Making 101. Something you might try, make something for the kids or nephews or whatever for Christmas. Every child likes a puzzle box. So, I have a 4x4 four four piece of redwood about four and a half inches long. Easy to find, wonderful wood to work with when you're starting bandsaw boxes. It's not terribly expensive and it's easy to dry. So we get a nice piece here, it's all squared up and sanded. The first thing we need to do is to cut off our bottom. Today we're cutting on a Pagus scroll saw bandsaw. I am using a 1.5 millimeter by 009 bandsaw blade. This is like the craziest thing ever. So our first step is to cut off our bottom. When we cut off our bottom, we want to make sure that the block still sits flat. So if you have a hard time cutting a straight line, cut a little arch up. That's fine too. The important thing is the box sits bottom is flat. We don't want any rock. So there we are, nice and flat, doesn't rock. The bottom is cut off. How thick do you want to make the bottom? You know, I don't know. I'm probably three-eighths here. I never measure anything. Um, you can make it thinner. You can make it thicker. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. It's a beauty fan saw box. Um, our next step will be to make our locking teeth. I come in and I like to take out the corner for my teeth. Again, there's no right or wrong. You can put a key anywhere in a box. A good key does two things. It goes up, it goes down, and it locks the box up. When it fall out. So, I put a simple it goes up, it goes down, and it will not fall out. Put our key aside, we're going to cut off our top now. When we cut off our top, we're going to cut a nice dovetail. This will allow our lid to slide freely on and off. It will also act as a handle. This way you can lift out the inner lid from the box. Again, gently moving the wood. Let the saw do the work. Okay. The top is cut off. It goes both ways. And you may notice from the shape of this, it's thicker at this end than this end. That's to give a little more meat up here. Again, with the key sliding through, this is the most fragile part of the box. We make things to last as long as we can. Now I'm going to cut out the inside of the box coming in behind my key so as to hide my entry point. I'm simply going to follow the contour of the outside. Now the exception to that is when we get to our slides right here. And I'm going to make those a little bit thicker because again, that is a stress point with the lid sliding on and off. How thick do you make the walls on a box like this? Well, you know, again, there's no right or wrong. If you want it thick enough, if it's reasonably strong, but you don't want it so thick that it makes punky. I right, have now. But the inside, I turn in and out the same spot, thicker here and here than our stress points. We have our inside block of wood now, and the next thing we're going to do is cut up our inside wood. We're going to follow the contour. And I would guess on a quarter inch stick here. This is our inside lid. 
Now we're going to have a little bit of fun, and we're going to make a box to go inside the box. Let's bring our guide down just a little bit. But now I'm cutting out the box that we're going to make for the inside. That will be our inside box in a few minutes. Right now I'm going to cut the frame that will hold the inside box in place in our puzzle box. This is our frame. The box will sit inside of that. And it will lock in place like that. So, I, I don't like it being this tall. It's just personal again. There's no right or wrong. I'm going to cut the top off, flatten it out. Then I'm going to leave a little tail on the end of it. Okay, this strap I throw away. I now have my cage with tail on the top of it. That tail will support the inside of it. You will see how that works in a few minutes. So we're going to make a box out of this to go inside of our box. First thing we're going to do is cut a handle. Okay. The handle is cut. Now we have to cut the bottom and top off, make it into a box. I am leaving the bearing up high so you can see better, hopefully. I haven't talked much about where my hands are, but you'll see they are always laying on the saw. I never work with my hands up or down, they lay on the saw. I have now cut off the bottom of the box. Now I'm going to cut off the top, and again, I'm going to follow the contour. You don't have to, but I kind of like it. So I now have my top and my bottom. Now what do we have to do with our box? Hollow it out, right? Top and bottom. Here's our middle. Let's make it hollow. Now here I'm leaving my wall maybe in, I don't know, an eighth inch, possibly a little bit better, it has our wall. So, we have our bottom, our midsection, and our top. Now we have a box to go in our box. But we also have this proper wood rack. You know what? If we're going to put a box in our box, maybe we should put a drawer in the box that's in the box. It's kind of sound like Dr. Seuss. So let's get a handle. Get a handle. Let's cut off our bottom. The bottom to our drawer now. And I'm going to come in along the back wall. I'm going out. This is what's left of waste. I'll throw that away. We have a drawer now that goes into a box. Our last two cuts are on what's left of our wood. Where we came out of our box right here, we're going to cut that off. 
We're going to call that our joiner. Right here. This will be used to bind the box back together again. Right here. That's the joiner. And the last cut we make is a shoulder. The shoulder is designed to support our inside lid. And maybe a eighth of an inch stick. This is our shoulder. So what have we done? Well, let's see. Here's our bottom. It goes onto our box like this. And now we have our box with a drawer. And remember, we have the framework to hold it in place. The framework goes in our box like this. So set the box in the box. Here it is inside. Everybody can see. Our shoulder will slide in and get glued onto the side. The frame that holds our little box gets glued on to the side. Our joiner gets glued on right here. That binds it all together. I'm trying to hold all these little pieces inside here for you guys. Our inside lid then simply sets on these shoulder here, the joiner here, and that little piece we left on our framework. Our lid slides on, and our box locks shut, okay? I recommend using tight bond one to glue it together. But like I say, everybody likes a puzzle box, big kids, little kids. It's a great Christmas item to make. Good luck and happy sawing. Merry Christmas to everybody.